SpaceX's massive Starship vehicle may start taking to the skies in earnest this summer. Most recently, SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk revealed that SpaceX's Starship will be ready for the first orbital flight of its kind in July. Interestingly enough, in the same series of tweets on June 14th, the billionaire entrepreneur also exposed the launch schedule of the next Starship. He said that we will have a second Starship stack ready to fly in August and then monthly thereafter. According to Musk, much of this prep work involves building and testing Raptors, the next generation of rocket engines that will power the Starship. For now, the company is quickly heading to static fire campaigns for both Ship 24 and Booster 7, paving the way for the orbital launch attempt of this game changer. The rollback of prototype S24 is a potential sign that this prototype will receive its 3C level and 3RVAC Raptor engines prior to returning to the launch site. Musk also just shared an image of S24 in the high bay, and as you know, SpaceX finished installing all of the 33 engines on Booster 7. All of this marks a crucial step toward testing both ship and booster that is already the center of attention for a highly anticipated orbital test flight, which will set the ball rolling for SpaceX's future. And besides that, the production as well as the assembly of the next-gen prototypes is also happening very quickly. Up until now, we can see some parts of B9, B10, SN26, and even SN27 with unique upgraded designs at Starbase. Additionally, SpaceX teams are also trying to complete Stage 0, technical preparations for the Starship test flight. Over the past year, the company has made significant progress in building and outfitting the Texas launch pad. Starship is designed to be fully reusable with the Super Heavy Booster and Starship, essentially part upper stage and part in-space transporter, capable of returning to Earth with a vertical landing back on its launch pad. And then, fly again! SpaceX's concept for recovering the Super Heavy Booster involves catching it with articulating chopstick arms on the launch tower. The company is now testing ground systems, gearing up the test campaigns in the near future. The Starship's first orbital test flight, though audacious in scale, will aim to prove the rocket's basic launch and re-entry capabilities without fully testing out the complicated landing and recovery systems, according to a SpaceX filing with the Federal Communications Commission last year. On the first orbital mission, SpaceX plans for the Starship to re-enter the atmosphere after one trip around Earth, heading for a controlled landing at sea in the Pacific Ocean near Hawaii. The Super Heavy Booster will splash down in the Gulf of Mexico. SpaceX wants to use the Starship vehicle to launch the company's Starlink internet satellites, which are heavier, next-generation versions of the broadband relay stations, as opposed to the 1.5 version that was flown by the smaller Falcon 9 rocket. An animation recently released from SpaceX showing the company's concept for deploying Starlink satellites from a Starship vehicle in orbit, using a mechanism that works like a giant Pez dispenser. But hardware readiness won't guarantee a July Starship flight. SpaceX still needs to secure a launch license from the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration. Getting one won't necessarily be easy, however, especially when the FAA just issued an environmental assessment of Starship activities at Starbase, which laid out more than 75 mitigations that SpaceX must do to... Uh, mitigate its impact on the surrounding area. A biodiversity hotspot. Regardless of a dozen of attached conditions, the FAA's approval has raised the possibility of SpaceX's landmark rocket flight lifting off from Starbase, Texas. Meanwhile, Starship's backup launch pad in Florida is stuck with NASA. According to Reuters, a NASA senior official said, NASA wants Elon Musk's SpaceX to ensure its plan to launch its next-generation Starship rocket from Florida will not put nearby launch infrastructure at risk that is critical to the ISS. The new hurdle further complicates and could potentially delay the launch plan for the rocket. 
which faces an already protracted regulatory review of its primary launch site in Texas. SpaceX's proposals to address NASA's concerns, which include a plan to be able to launch U.S. astronauts from a different launch pad in Florida, could take months to get agency approval. SpaceX last year accelerated construction of an orbital Starship launch pad at its facilities in Cape Canaveral, Florida, as an alternative to the rocket's primary test launch and development site in Boca Chica, Texas, which has been subject to a lengthy regulatory review set to conclude next week. But one of SpaceX's existing Florida facilities, called Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on the coast of Cape Canaveral, is the only pad approved to launch the company's Crew Dragon capsule. NASA depends on that spacecraft to ferry its astronauts to the ISS. NASA officials in recent months have told SpaceX that a Starship explosion at Launch Complex 39A could effectively cut off the space agency's sole means of launching U.S. astronauts to the ISS. We all recognize that if you had an early failure like we did on one of the early SpaceX flights, it would be pretty devastating to 39A, Kathy Luters, NASA's space operations chief, said in an interview of the agency's discussions with SpaceX. SpaceX did not return a request for comment. The company has already invested heavily in building a Starship pad some hundreds of feet from Pad 39A's launch tower. It has responded by pitching NASA on a plan to outfit its other Florida pad, Launch Complex 40, five miles away on Space Force property, with the means to launch U.S. astronauts according to a person familiar with the plans. The company is also studying ways to harden 39A or make the launch pad more resilient to both explosive Starship accidents and and the immense forces emitted from a successful Starship liftoff, looters said. Hardening the 39A pad and launching humans from Pad 40 would both require agency approval. SpaceX is working with us on those things, said looters, because it's also in their best interest to not have what is a pretty steady source of income for them become interrupted. Part of SpaceX's challenge is to show that 39A will not be damaged by Starship's novel liquid oxygen and methane fuel, a combination of propellants that NASA and U.S. regulators are not familiar with. According to Randy Repchek, a deputy manager in the FAA's Office of Commercial Space Transportation, which oversees launch pad safety, the problem is the explosive potential for that combination is not well known. Well, it looks like launching the world's most powerful rocket is more difficult than we thought. Despite this, we still expect that the long-awaited flight will happen next month. If all goes well, the vehicle could go very far afield in the next few years. And with that, today's episode has come to its conclusion. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.